Hi, my name is Connor Long and I'm back with a ball python update and another vivarium build. So my ball python is almost 26 years old. Uh, this is old for a ball python. The typical lifespan for a well cared for animal is between 20 and 30 years old, uh, though there are records of them living into their 50s and early 60s, but these are pretty uncommon. Recently I've been struggling with maintaining the snake's respiratory health. I had a thermostat fail in early 2021 that resulted in a respiratory infection, um, and then after I had nursed him back to health and introduced him into a new enclosure, he seemed like he was backsliding. So I pulled him out of his new enclosure so I could troubleshoot it and get him sorted in the interim. Fortunately, at this time, he appears to have made a full recovery. Uh, he's now in his new enclosure, which I have designed and optimized specifically to try and prevent reoccurrence of these issues in the future. So what happened with my original enclosure? Well, back in 2020, I had posted about my first bioactive ball python vivarium. This setup worked very well for about 18 months in my old house. Uh, but when I moved, I moved to a new home with inferior insulation, and it was a lot more challenging to keep the enclosure appropriately heated during the winter months due to the fact that one side of the enclosure is all screen, and um, my new house had drafts and it just wasn't as, as stable of a temperature as the old place. Um, so I began to plan building a new vivarium of my own design from scratch uh, to try and get around this, but you know, that's, that's a, a big undertaking and I, I was sort of st starting the, the initial steps. Uh, but the plan became more urgent when a thermostat failure made my original enclosure temperature drop about 10 degrees colder than the thermostat was reading. And this unfortunately coincided with a simultaneous failure of my redundant thermometer, because I had a, a second thermometer to check the, the thermostat, and that one just died, and the thermostat looked like it was working. It was also during a period of time I was working uh, overnight emergency shifts, um, and these are like 13 to 16 hour overnight ER shifts for a couple weeks at a time, um, so I, I just didn't catch it as quickly as I probably would have otherwise. When the snake missed his first feeding since going to the bioactive enclosure, I was a little bit concerned, so I pulled him out and, and took a look at him, and I realized that he had audible respirations, which made me concerned he might have a respiratory infection, so I, I checked all the, all the parameters in the cage, realized what was going on. Uh, pulled him out of the bioactive enclosure, put him into a hospital setup, um, and got him onto antibiotics. Um, I, I did a CT scan of his lungs and had it read out by a, a radiologist who knows how to read Python CTs, which wasn't the easiest to find, but I, I fortunately know somebody with some experience doing that. Uh, the, the goal being to try and rule out something more insidious like, like cancer, because he is on the, on the older side. Uh, but the results came back more consistent with bacterial pneumonia. Um, I also did a culture of his lungs, which required me to learn a procedure I had not personally performed before, but fortunately I was able to do it successfully. Um, so once he was on those antibiotics, uh, I got him eating again, and the audible respiration stopped, and, and um, I upped the temperatures in the, the new enclosure, added a bunch of new, more heat elements, and got him into the setup, and, and uh, currently he seems like he's doing a lot better. So the, the plan for the new enclosure originally w was just to have better insulation that could compensate for the ambient winter temperatures of my home. But since I designed it from scratch, I elected to combine a rack tub with a vivarium to make a hybrid setup where the rack tub essentially functions as a removable burrow with an easy to maintain temperature and humidity. And the vivarium is sort of an outworld he can explore with full spectrum lighting, additional hides, and live plants to make it bioactive. My goal is to combine the best of old school and new school reptile husbandry and uh, let the snake kind of choose where he wanted to go in the enclosure and thermoregulate appropriately. This project has been a success overall. I built this enclosure from scratch. In past videos I've made, I've sort of glazed over the woodworking element of these builds, since other YouTube channels run by more experienced woodworkers have good tutorials already available. I'm going to go into a slightly more detailed build of the actual vivarium here than I have in the past, but it will be a sped up version of the process. My hope is that I can provide enough of a visual that you can kind of follow along and piece it together without me having to spend 100 hours to make a step-by-step. -step. Uh, and then I'll also link to some woodworking tutorials um, that I use to build this in the description. And these tutorials do provide more of a step-by-step -step than uh, my video is going to. And so if you're interested in doing something like this, you can kind of watch how I did it and then watch the step-by-steps that I watched and that should be enough to, to get you going. Basically, I bought a bunch of 2x2s and 2x4s and OSB. I made a frame out of 2x2s and 2x4s and used OSB for the walls. I used OSB because at the time I was making this enclosure, there was a serious lumber shortage that had massively jacked up the price of materials. I would advise that folks making a similar build use decent looking plywood instead, as that will expedite the finishing process.
I used OSB to make a track for the rack tub to slide in and out of, and then I sealed it with dry lock and painted over the dry lock with black paint to make it just look neater. I cut a slot out of the walls to incorporate the tub track, and I put the whole thing together using wood glue, wood screws, and clamps. When the basic skeleton was completed, and the cracks were filled in with wood filler, it consisted of a frame at the base of the enclosure, a frame towards the top of the enclosure where the light compartment begins, and a frame at the very top where the light compartment ends. I proceeded to seal the enclosure with pond armor epoxy. The first coat I used was white, and I then did a second coat with grey. The color does not matter as it will not be visible in the finished vibarium. After a 48 hour water check confirmed the structure was watertight, it was time to begin the finishing process. I used underlayment as a budget veneer, and I framed the whole structure with redwood boards that I made myself by carefully sanding down redwood fence pickets. I made the vents myself as well, using additional redwood boards and black galvanized steel fence screen. When the construction portion of the build was completed, I painted the inside of the light compartment with black paint. I sanded everything down and applied clear polyurethane finish to the wood. I used a large piece of galvanized steel fence screen to separate the vivarium from the light compartment. I then applied a final piece of painted OSB to the top. I used plastic tracks for the glass doors of the vivarium and the front doors of the light compartment. The light compartment doors were made from the same underlayment I used to cover up the OSB. The final product is insulated on three sides with a backdrop made of insulation foam. There are air vents on both sides at the level of the substrate, as well as vents at the top of the enclosure at the back of the light compartment. This creates a chimney effect where as hot air rises, fresh air is pulled in through the bottom vents. The tub track is host to a 34-inch uh, long by 18-inch wide by 5-inch tall Freedom Breeder rack tub that the snake can access through a hole in the bottom of the enclosure. The slots in front of and behind the tub track will hold the substrate that will allow me to plant the vivarium and make the setup bioactive. The enclosure is very large, with a usable volume of approximately 160 gallons. The rack tub burrow functions as a heated humid hive that is equivalent in size to what many breeders and old school keepers use as their entire enclosure. In fact, a, uh, a kind of old school ball python breeder would be using these large freedom breeder rack tubs as their primary enclosure to hold an adult snake through their entire life. After letting everything air out for a couple of weeks, I was ready to set up the vivarium, a massive undertaking that I will detail in part two. If you've been enjoying these videos, please go ahead and leave me a like and a, a subscribe and click the little bell thing. I don't know what it does, but other people on YouTube keep asking me to do it. So, you know, I'm just kind of repeating what they say. Um, I have a, a few more projects in the hopper, uh, but you know, my goal is not really to ever make any money off of this. Um, I'm doing it mostly because I like to see uh, it'd be helpful for people. So if it's helpful, let me know and I'll keep making these. Um, and if it's not, just don't and I probably won't. See you guys.